That's right, Python is gonna help us learn about black history. In today's video, we will be doing a beginner level Python project. In honor of Black History Month and learning more about black history, I decided to create a fact generator that generates facts about black history. As mentioned, we will be using Python as well as two APIs for this project. Before we dive into the code walkthrough for this video, be sure to smash that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So what is an API exactly? API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it's a way that two computer programs can interact and communicate with each other using requests and responses. When you want to retrieve data from a service, you send what is called a request and in turn, you will get back a response. You can think of an API sort of as the messenger that handles sort of those service requests for specific data and handles those responses as well. The two APIs that we'll be using for this project are the Black History Fact API and the Google Custom Search Engine API. So you can follow along with this walkthrough. I have the Git repository down below with all of the code so you guys can look at the files. What I'm doing here is I'm creating a secret.py file, and this is going to contain all of the API token information that we'll be using for this project. Next, we're going to go to blackhistoryapi.com, sign up for an API key, and then from that email, paste that key into our secret.py file. Next, we're going to follow the instructions for the custom search JSON API, and we're going to generate a new API key. So we're going to create a new project and then get that API key and put that once again in our secret.py file. These are just sort of the preliminary steps for our project. All of these instructions will be in the readme file of the GitHub repository. All right, so now with the API key that we just created, we wanna open up the Google console, open up that API key, and then we want to set a restriction to only allow this for the custom search engine API. And this is because Google has many APIs, so we want to specify that we want to only allow this API key for the custom search engine API. And for our final preliminary step, we are going to be creating a programmable custom search engine. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm naming it Black History Fact Generator. And I'm also adding all of the websites that I want this custom search engine to search. So I'm adding Google and Wikipedia. Feel free to include any other websites that you guys trust, but this is how we're going to be getting the images for our picture. And also make sure to enable image search for the search setting. And finally, once we create that search engine, we want to open that search engine back up, copy the search engine ID and paste that into our secret.py file, and we are ready to go. All right, so moving on to the actual implementation of this project, I'm going to create my main.py file. And I'm going to start off by importing all of the necessary packages that we need for this project. As you can see here, there's some packages that I do not have installed. So I'm going to go ahead and open my terminal and install those packages. I'll have all the instructions down below on some of these packages that are not included from Python, just in case you have trouble installing them and need some guidance. But that is what I'm doing here. And I'm going to continue importing all of the necessary packages that I need. All right, so now I'm just creating my if name equals main line, and this is gonna be where my Python program starts. And I'm also creating my black history fact generator class and defining all of the necessary methods that I'm going to be using within this black history fact generator. All right, so now I'm just initializing my Black History Fact Generator class, and I'm also going to start playing around with Create Screen and creating my Tkinter window. And you can see here I created a window name as well as I'm also going to just define the size of my window just to get things started. All 
All right, so now I'm just kind of getting creative with it and I am gonna add a background to my Tikenta window. So I'm gonna go to Google and I'm just gonna search for Black History Month wallpapers and I'm gonna pick out some that I like and just save those to my computer. And after I do see a couple that I am um, enjoying, I think are really cool, I'm gonna pretty much open this in Canva and I'm going to resize it to um, the same size of my Tikenta window. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this photo as a PNG file just because that file type works best with the image libraries that we imported. And I'm gonna go ahead and add this into my coding directory for the Black History Fact Generator. And I just have it under an image folder, but I'm gonna be sure to include that in my code. Um, and once again, you guys can check out my GitHub repository um, for all of my files and folders and all of that stuff. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm just organizing the different components that I want on my Black History Fact Generator. So I know that when I generate a fact, I do want a person to show up. So I'm creating a frame for a person. And I'm also going to create a frame for the different buttons that I have on my window. So frames are just an organized way of sort of placing different items into your Tikenta window. And I'm also defining the dimensions of my frames. And this kind of takes some playing around with, but I already know the dimensions for my 400 by 400 window. So I know the dimensions that I want for my frame. But yeah, feel free to play around with this. This is all sort of like up to your creative idea. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the same as mine, but this is just sort of how I want it to fit on my window. And of course you can throw in some color and some borders for whatever you like with these frames. So that's kind of what I'm doing as well. I'm making, you know, some of my frames red for where I want the person to be and just sort of customizing it to what I like. And what I'm doing here now is I'm just creating a new button for my Tikenta window and this is going to be the generate fact button. And now that I have the frame for where my buttons go, I simply can place my button into the frame. And this is just why I like frames because it's an organized way of placing elements onto your Tikenta window. And I'm doing the same thing with the learn button where I'm creating a frame and I'm creating all of the dimensions and such that I need. And basically what we're working on is just sort of like the front end UI sort of aspect of the Tikenta window. But actually when you click a button or when you actually, you know, want to generate something, that is sort of like when you initialize like a command for the button. And that's, I guess, sort of like the back end. And you can see when we sort of run our Tikenta window and we click on the buttons, nothing actually happens. And that's because we've initialized the command to sort of basically run whatever is code is in our method that we set it to um so now we have to work on those actually but before we get into sort of that back end work what i'm doing right now is i'm just doing some more customization and setting some font for the generate button and the learn button and this is all up to you and sort of your creative inspiration but yeah that's basically what i'm working on All right, so now I'm going to be working on calling the two APIs that we'll be using in this request method, starting with the Black History Fact API. And right now I'm just setting up the header, which is like the necessary format that I need in order to make this request. So what I'm putting in the request.get is the base that is given by the Black History API website. And this is in order to make that request to get facts. And I'm also just specifying the response to be 200 words because I don't want any more than that. And as you can see, my request to the API was successful. So I did get back to a fact along with some metadata. So now I'm going to work on parsing that data and utilizing this for my Black History Fact Generator.
and you can see after parsing and printing all of that data I now have plenty of information to input this into my window to Kenter window as well as use some of this information for my Google custom search API which I'm working on the request for that right now So I have the fact as a string, and what I'm working on now is actually pasting that fact onto my tkinter window so it's actually viewable when I generate a fact. So I'm just working on that now and I'm making sure that where I'm placing it is the same dimensions as where I have that frame. So as you can see here, it's looking good so far. Different facts are being pasted onto my window. However, some of the facts are way too long for my window. So what I created is this format fact algorithm, which generally just splits the string for every 10 words, it creates a new line so that the sentence isn't too long on the tkinter window. So now what I'm working on is pasting the image of the person onto my tkinter window. And I already have the Google custom search response when it searched for an image using the name from my response from the Black History Fact API. So now I'm just working to paste this image onto the screen. And I'm not actually storing this image on locally on my computer. What I'm doing is I'm just taking the URL, transferring it into bytes, and I'm just gonna paste that image using the image libraries that we have. But it's actually possible, you know, that I don't get an image for the URL, like the response doesn't generate an image. So my workaround for that is to just also have this empty person icon. And anytime an image is informed, then this person would just pop up. And I'm just making this 200 by 200 because I know that this is going to fit on my screen nice and formatted well. Um, again, you guys might have to adjust for you and depending on what screen size you do. But as you can see, the empty icon is popping up as planned. So now I'm just working on the learn more method. And again, when the learn more button is pressed, the command that we set is to come to this method. So basically, whenever that button is pressed, a new web browser will open with the source that we saved thanks to the Black History Fact API. It gave us that metadata that we can utilize. And yeah, that's pretty much that. Feel free to check the description box for more info and resources on this project and feel free to leave a comment if you have a question about anything that we went through in the walkthrough. So thank you guys so much for watching this code walkthrough. I really hope you got something out of it. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.